The opinions expressed in this video are independent and do not necessarily represent the views of tbnewswatch.com or Dougal Media. Viewer discretion is advised. The Wheelhouse, the Wheelhouse. with Jill Galant. Jill Galant. We're hovering around the 10 game mark on this NHL season and slowly taking shape is the landscape of each conference. And there have been some surprises for sure. Dallas and Colorado leading the Western Conference. I'm an Avalanche fan and I was hardly puffing my chest out in the offseason. And Dallas arguably lost their best player in Brad Richards, which is kind of funny though, because now they're leading the Western Conference and New York is last in the league in scoring. In the East, the usual suspects are at the top, but not in the conventional way we're accustomed to. Washington has yet to lose this season and Pittsburgh is tied for tops in the East and they've only gotten four games out of Evgeny Malkin. And they're still waiting for Sidney Crosby to decide if another concussion will make his brain explode. I mean, he's clear for contact, but how much contact is enough anyways? I've been trying to figure that out for 27 years. Ladies, help me out here. But it's the Canadian teams that have me the most intrigued. After many Leaf chirps and subsequent threats of bodily harm, it seems the Leaf fans have put their cheering to good use and willed their team to another level. Or at least they'll lead you to believe that. So this week, I'm gonna play nice, Give the Leafs a compliment for once and give a prognosis on where I think Canadian teams are going and how they'll finish this season. Note, this is not in order of how I think teams will finish, so Leaf fans, don't wet your pants when I list your team last. Ottawa. Ever since this team went to the cup final and lost to Anaheim, this team has never been the same. Danny Heatley stopped scoring 50, Alfredson got old, and they made the worst mistake of picking Wade Redden over Zdeno Chara. Luckily though, this team has got some pieces to rebuild. If they can acquire a blue chip forward in the next three years, they might be able to make some noise in the Eastern Conference. Until then, I think the best they'll do is eighth in the East and most likely get swept by the likely President's Cup winner, the Washington Capitals. Calgary. Another team just going through the motions. GM Jay Feaster inherited a team from Daryl Sutter that is almost completely void of any talent except for Jerome McGinley. Yes, Rene Bork and Alex Tangay are good players, but you're not going to win the Northwest Division with those top six forwards and an overpaid Jay Bowmeister. The real question is, how much longer does Jerome McGinley stay aflame? If the Flames were smart, they would try to deal him and try to get as many assets as they can before he runs out of gas and becomes as useless as a dog with a Facebook page. People tend to forget of what made the Flames half decent in the last decade anyway. They traded an aging Joe Newendike for an up-and-coming Jerome McGinley. That full circle process of trading an aging veteran for an up and coming star will need to happen if the Flames want to see anything near the postseason. Winnipeg, sentimental feelings aside, this team has no shot this season. Yeah, I said it. When your best forward is Kyle Wellwood or Andrew Ladd, there's no easy way to put it, you're screwed. There will definitely be some emotional home games, one on adrenaline, but that's going to get old faster than saying, every day I'm buffaling. Edmonton, this is a team I'm kind of excited for. I personally don't think they're going to make the playoffs this year, but their young guns have really made an impression with me. Ryan Nugent Hopkins already has a hat trick, Taylor Hall is becoming a driving force, and Jordan Everly looks like a 30 goal scorer. I think this team within five years will win a Stanley Cup or break the record of having the most players not legally allowed to go to the bar. Montreal, this could be the year where everybody gets canned. You can't fault the GM for trying to make some moves, but the track record in the last three to five years has just been awful. Scott Gomez is one of the most overpaid players in the league. Andre Markov hasn't even got on the ice yet this season is being paid almost $6 million, and they still haven't locked up Carey Price to a long-term deal. The Habs right now are dead last in the East, and if they don't make the playoffs and make it out at least the first round, expect everybody to get terminated faster than anyone associated with John Connor. Vancouver, another season, another slow start. The Canucks, though, they're primed to make another deep playoff run, but I wonder if GM Mike Gillis will be tempted to make a move at the trade deadline. Maybe Jerome McGinley or Zach Parise? But this team, unfortunately, all comes down to Roberto Luongo. They have the pieces in place at every position to be successful, but like any other winning or losing team, the goaltender will either take the glory or the criticism. Just look at Tim Thomas right now. The Game 7 Stanley Cup loss is still ingrained in people's heads. I still have them making it at least to the Western Conference Finals, but only if they take out the Chicago Blackhawks. Toronto. As you can tell by the jersey, I'm not really fond of this team. Who am I kidding? I hate this team. I hate the fans, and I hate you. Whoa, whoa, I'm just kidding. <sighs> This team is the classic overachiever, but they're also doing some good things. They're getting some timely scoring and they're beating quality opponents. Plus, Phil Kessel is on pace for 92 goals and 170 points, so clearly it's not over the line to give him the Hart Trophy right now, is it? If it was up to Leaf fans, they'd give them the Vezina too. At this rate, of course they'll make the playoffs, but they need to avoid that predictable midseason slump. There's still plenty of time though for Brian Burke to add some firepower. 
But as long as Burke sticks by his morals of not putting in offer sheets on players or front-loading contracts for free agents, the team will never progress to where it was in the 90s and early 2000s. You know the time when there was no cap and they acquired players with one year left to retirement. You know, the glory days. Thanks for checking out the Wheelhouse. Hit me up on Twitter at TB Wheelhouse. Let me know which Canadian team you think will do best this year, or you can let me know how good I look in this Leafs jersey. Have a great weekend, everybody. The Wheelhouse, the Wheelhouse. with Jill Galant.